Meet the Asian longhorn beetle, a voracious feeder. It chews its way into trees and chews its way back out again. The telltale signs of Asian longhorn beetle infestations are the beetles themselves and the large exit holes they leave in trees. What people don't usually see are the huge channels called galleries the insects carve inside the tree. These tunnels weaken and eventually kill the tree. The adult Asian longhorn beetle lays eggs in the bark of the trees. The female will chew out a small circular area about an inch long, uh, chew that out of the bark and cut a little slit in the middle of it and she sticks her egg inside that slit. When the egg hatches, the little grub that comes out of it burrows straight down into the wood and it continues to feed there for the best part of a year, getting larger and larger and tunneling all different directions until it's, it's cutting holes that are about a half of an inch in, in diameter. Uh, at this point, the, uh, the larva forms a cocoon inside the tree and in a short time the adult will emerge and usually the, emer the adults will emerge uh, in about a year after the egg was laid and once the adult emerges then the cycle starts all over again. The Asian longhorn beetle is native to China and it was first discovered in New York City in 1996 and was found in Chicago in 1998. Scientists believe this pest came to the United States from Asian ships. The vectors for this spread were wooden shipping crates made from trees that already contained Asian longhorn beetle larvae. This is a piece of lumber from a crate uh, of some goods that were imported from China. And you can see that this was cut from a tree that had been infested by the Asian longhorn beetle. And it has huge galleries in it. Um, this is just a cross section, but you can imagine these galleries going in, in every direction uh, on the tree. And with this much damage to a tree, it's easy to see how, how the, the tree would be injured or even killed. When these shipping crates got to this country, the insects left the dead scrap lumber and went looking for live trees to feed on. They found out they really liked maple trees. <sighs> Yummy! They, they like to feed on maples, poplars, many of, the, uh, many of our softer hardwood trees, but they view maples about the way uh, human beings would view Hershey bars. They just love to eat maple trees. And that's bad? really bad because it, it bores large holes, large tunnels into trees and weakens the trunks, it'll weaken limbs and branches and essentially it will kill uh, an entire large tree. Asian longhorn beetle, if it ever gets loose in Pennsylvania, would be probably one of our major hardwood pests. I, I would imagine it would be more devastating than even the gypsy moth because once a tree is infested, there is no recovery. Youch! So this little insect can cause some big problems. The arrival of the Asian longhorn beetle has resulted in the loss of trees and the wildlife that use those trees for habitat. And the loss of trees also means loss of shade and potentially higher city temperatures. Limbs or entire trees weakened by the beetle are dangerous and can fall on people. Since Asian longhorned beetles prefer maple trees, this means a loss of maple syrup products and furniture wood. It can even be a threat to tourism if the beautiful fall leaf colors are reduced. The presence of invasive species means that the natural system is out of balance. So how do we correct it? Or at least manage it? Just spraying poisons won't necessarily restore the balance. And it could cause even greater problems. That's where I come in to explain that problems this complex require a more sophisticated approach. One we call Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. Instead of a one-shot approach, with Integrated Pest Management, scientists and public workers employ a pyramid of IPM tactics, starting with the simplest prevention techniques and moving up the scale to more complicated interventions. At the bottom of the pyramid are cultural tactics, such as changing the environment to be unsuitable for the pest. Then come physical mechanical tactics, things like screens, barriers, traps, or plant removal. Next come the biological tactics, introducing predators, parasites, or other living organisms to combat the pests. 
get the good bugs, to kill the bad ones, and restore the balance. Finally come the chemical tactics, such as the use of pesticides, like insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, or other chemical controls. Part of the cultural tactics for the Asian longhorned beetle is regulatory. The United States has placed an embargo on untreated wood shipping crates from China and has requested that other materials, such as plastic or cardboard, be used instead. They have also requested using higher quality wood, but this would be more expensive because the cheapest wood for building crates is wood that isn't much good for anything else because it's already been damaged by the beetles. The physical mechanical tactic for Asian longhorn beetle damage is to identify affected trees, chop them down, chip them up, and burn the chips so that the beetles can't spread further. A death sentence isn't a happy outcome, but it's the only way to save other trees that haven't been invaded yet. The real problem with Asian longhorn beetle is that there is no good way to control it. Uh, in its native range, there aren't any very important biological controls, predators or parasites, and because these things feed down deep inside a, a tree or a limb, it's impossible to get any kind of insecticide into where it's feeding. So there is essentially no way to get to the, the, the larva that is doing all the damage. Well, thanks, Jim. Like he said, there are no known natural predators to serve as biological controls of Asian longhorn beetle in the United States. And we've already heard that there aren't any effective chemical controls for this pest. However, there are other cultural options for the future. Let's ride! Entomologists and horticulturists are working to determine which species of trees are likely to resist the Asian longhorn beetle. We already know they like maple, but we don't know whether they like other valuable trees such as oak or ash. But the scientists have to be really careful when studying these insects so that they don't let any get out. This is one of the trees that, one of the ashes, and they go ahead and went ahead and harvested it. Basically, they take all the leaves off. Now we have the stick, and they'll go ahead and start harvesting that. Um, everything that we harvest as far as plant materials go into an autoclave bag, and it will be autoclaved at the end of the process so that it's sterile when it leaves here, and then it gets incinerated um, at the animal incinerator on campus so that it's destroyed. All the media gets autoclaved, is bagged and autoclaved as well, and then it gets dumped. So everything that leaves here, leaves here dead or cleaned up in some form so we are sure that we don't have an insect walking out on us. And actually on the leaves here, on this side you'll see sawdust and you see it on these leaves as well. But as they're drilling holes, drilling into the wood, they're pushing out their sawdust and the sawdust drops onto the leaves and drops onto the lower branches and you see these large piles of sawdust and all of that is sawdust from the beetles kicking it out as well, the larvae kicking it out. Asian longhorn beetle, interestingly enough, produces, the larvae produce a lot of, or push out a lot of sawdust out of the tree, so it seems to be a lot larger amount than you'd normally see. It basically girdled all the way around from the insertion point. The insertion point was here. It inserted, we inserted it, it is dug all the way around, chewed all the way around here and around here before it entered, and it's entered there and the way the hole looks, it looks like it's probably up here somewhere, which is what they standardly do. But, so on some trees you'll get this kind of girdling pattern, on others you won't. Some may go directly in, but it's, the sugar maple seems to be very tasty this time of year. And thank you, Jim. Hey, don't let those guys out. We don't want to have to deal with these guys like I've heard they've had to do in the big cities. In New York and Chicago, for every tree removed, they are trying to replace it with another species that won't serve as a host for Asian longhorn beetle. Arborists also don't want to replace them with all the same kind of tree. They want the population to be diverse so that all the replacement trees don't get wiped out in case there is another disease or pest that targets a specific kind of tree. 
Research from Penn State and the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture could help inform us about just which varieties of trees should be replanted. Wow! What happened to you?